when you're insulin resistant, that is you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this episode, we feature osteocalcin. Osteocalcin is typically lower in someone with metabolic problems. So who is osteocalcin? Well, the osteoprefix tells you it has something to do with bone. But this is a bone chemical with a big reach. It's produced by osteoblasts. These are the bone cells that are tasked with making bone. Now, osteocalcin actually doesn't help these guys make bone. In fact, it does just the opposite. It actually interferes with a process, which doesn't sound like a good thing, but it is. You see, osteocalcin comes in two flavors, a carboxylated and an uncarboxylated version. The carboxylated version stops bone formation, and this is what the osteoblasts produce. Uncarboxylated version makes bone formation happen. Mm, so, let me explain what happens. The carboxylated version hangs around in the bone matrix until another clan of bone cells, the osteoclasts, produce a vitamin K dependent enzyme that pulls the carboxyl groups off, making the uncarboxylated version. Calcium sticks to this uncarboxylated version like superglue. So only when osteoclasts are busy is new bone formed. This system ensures that the new bone is always laid down on a nice clean surface and thus sticks well. If this doesn't happen, that is the bone is laid down on a dirty surface, it could peel and crack with potentially disastrous consequences. This process of cleaning off the grit and grime and then popping on a fresh coat of calcium paint happens day in and day out. It's called bone remodeling. And it's very much a team effort. So osteoblast and osteoclast activity should be perfectly in sync, which is where osteocalcin comes in. It helps to sync osteoclast and osteoblast activity. But osteocalcin is a wanderer. It leaves the bone and enters the circulation. Its chief job here is to mobilize resources to build new bone. And bone building requires lots of energy. In fact, bone is classified as the fourth biggest sugar user in the body. Now, interestingly, bone doesn't need insulin to take up the sugar. But bone still responds to insulin. Insulin is the hormonal signal that triggers bone building. One of the reasons for this is insulin's job is to put away the groceries. And bone is a very useful cupboard. It stores calcium and phosphorus, among other things. So when you're insulin resistant, bone remodeling is not optimal because the bone is not getting the build more clue. In the long term, this puts you at risk of bone breaks. And in the short term, leaves you with less osteocalcin in your circulation, which impacts your energy metabolism. You see, Uncarboxylated osteocalcin's dispatch coincides with bone remodeling, but it does double duty. It lets the rest of the body know the bones are a building, so resources can be allocated appropriately. Appropriate allocations include sending sugar to the muscles so that they are strong enough to pull the newly minted bones around. Now, encouraging sugar to enter muscles is always a good thing. Muscles are the body's biggest sugar user. The more sugar they take up, the less sugar ends up circulating, so sugar spikes are avoided. Now, the sugar gate operated by osteocalcin is not the same sugar gate as used by insulin. Insulin uses GLUT4. Osteocalcin uses GRPC6A. 
but when all is said and done, increased osteocalcin is associated with increased insulin sensitivity. So more osteocalcin should be on your list of things to get if you want to enjoy better body chemistry. So what is the secret to more osteocalcin? In a word, more bone remodeling. The trigger for bone remodeling is partly biochemical, that is insulin, and partly mechanical. Load-bearing activity sparks a flurry of bone remodeling to ensure that the bones are able to accommodate that load. So load yourself up. Get off that chair and pound the pavement. Lift something heavy or just lift yourself up. Most activities are considered to be load-bearing. The exceptions are swimming and cycling. Here are a few of the journal articles I've used to tell the osteocalcin story. Osteocalcin is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the body that are amiss if you're suffering from metabolic syndrome. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about some of the other players in our ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.